Modeling architectural metal is not difficult but requires different approaches based on the component you are trying to model. Creating an I-beam structure has a different workflow than creating a wrought iron gate. In this movie, you will start with the easiest technique available, that is, using renderable splines. Renderable splines are useful to create metal components that have a cross-section based on a circle or a rectangle. You will use renderable splines to reproduce the mural in the scene. These include the shapes that simulate growing plants and the decorations in the L-shaped frame. In the bottom right viewport, display the camera 4 view to get a closer shot. Select the mural and hide it or simply delete it altogether as you will be recreating it. To create the mural on the wall, you could use the auto grid function. This ensures any shapes or objects you create align themselves to the normals of the wall. However, the auto grid feature works well with new objects but doesn't work so well when you're operating at a sub-object level. Instead, it is better to create a custom working grid so that all operations are confined to a space you specify. From the helpers panel, choose grid. With auto grid enabled, draw a grid of any size on the wall where you want to build the mural. At this time, you can disable auto grid as you won't need it anymore. Right click and choose activate grid to enable it. This becomes your new construction space. You can move the grid along the surface of the wall as the construction plane extends to infinity. You can now start building the mural. Start with an L shape. Use the line command and click three points that form the letter L. To keep the line straight, hold the shift key as you click the second and third points. Right click to finish the command. In the modify panel, go to spline mode. Enable the outline tool. Click and drag the spline to turn the two segments into a closed contour. Still in the Modify panel, choose the Create Line command. This creates a line that is part of the current spline. Using simple clicks, create three or four extensions to simulate growing or climbing plants. Right click to end the Create Line process. Go to Vertex Subobject Mode. Select all the vertices that simulate the growing plants. With a right click, turn these vertices into Bezier Mode. Use the right click again to reset all the Bezier tangents. Feel free to make adjustments to the vertices until you get a design you like. Next, you create the decorative elements that go in the frame. These spiraling elements are quite recurrent in wrought iron designs. You could try creating them with the line tool, but an easier method would be using the helix shape. A helix is a 3D shape, but can be used in 2D if its height is set to zero. You build a helix by specifying an inner radius with a click and drag, another move click specifies the height, and another specifies the outer radius. You don't need to be too accurate as you create the helix. You can always change its parameters later. In the Modify panel, ensure the height is set to zero so that it is in the same plane as the wall. Adjust the radii and the number of turns so that it looks similar to what is shown here. Once done, use the front view and mirror copy the shape on the XY mirror axis. Reposition the clone in the frame. Next, you connect the two spirals. Select the mural object and in the Modify panel, use the Attach tool to attach the two spirals. Using Create Line, enable 3D Snap. Right-click the Snap button and ensure only the End Point option is enabled. Connect the two spirals, End Point to End Point. Right-click to finish the Create Line process. Turn off Snap Mode and go into Vertex Mode. Using Region Select, select the vertices where the line meets a spiral. These are in effect two vertices sharing the same spot. Click Weld to weld the two vertices into one. 
Repeat the procedure with the other spiral. You can adjust vertices or even delete a few that do not seem necessary. One last note. Helixes are made of linear segments and that should be fine when seen from a distance. If you need to turn helixes into curves then you can do so at the spline level. Select the spline combo, right click and choose curve from the quad menu. Double check to see if some bezier handles are not out of shape and adjust where necessary. You can change individual vertex types, not all of them have to be bezier. From this point on, you can make the necessary mirror copies to duplicate the spirals. This can be done using mirror copy or by using shift rotate and shift move. And so the mural is created, but at this time it cannot be rendered just yet. To render a spline, first you need to give it volume. With the mural selected, expand the rendering rollout. Enable both check marks, enable in render and enable in viewport. By default, the cross sections are circular. Set the thickness to about 1 inch. Now the mural appears at render time. If you wish, go to the material editor and apply the existing blue metal material to the mural. Other than the circular cross sections, you can also give the spline a rectangular cross section. Finally, you can set the interpolation to adaptive so that curved areas have more subdivisions. Before you move on, you'd better reset the construction plane to the home grid. This is done by selecting the custom grid, right click it, and then choose activate home grid. If you need cross sections other than circular or rectangular, then you need a different workflow than renderable splines. In the next movie, you look at a technique that starts with splines, but that can use any type of cross sections you might need.